All right, here we go. About three minutes late, had a little bit of an issue with my, uh, I'm trying to do uh, a new audio. So I got a new like Yeti little microphone thing. Um, can you guys hear me a little bit better? Give me a thumbs up. Uh, I used to I used to just do the audio through my uh, my camera, but I felt like I could clean it up a little bit with the uh, with the Yeti. So, <clears throat> anyways, we'll get a couple people in here. We'll get started. Uh, what's going on, KP? What's up, Dylan? What's up, Adventures with Super Dave? How we doing, brother? It's good to see everybody. We've got about what's up, Jacob Stangman seventy eight. Mustang, Mustang guy, what's going on? Okay, so Mustang. I always keep it on underneath so I can edit it if I have to. So, anyways, guys, today, what's going on? This is uh, this is Neo Mustangs, my Fox Body Mustang channel. Uh, obviously, um, every week, if you're new to the channel, every week we try to do a live stream. We're pretty consistent. Um, so, if you're new to the channel. You know, give me a thumbs up and, and consider subscribing. But uh, every week we usually try to uh, do something uh, on the channel that, you know, could be either motivating or or have some sort of uh, like, uh, you know, teach you something about Fox bodies or something like an experience that I went through with Fox bodies. So it's, uh you know, we got chat over here to my left or right. I don't know which one it is. And we... Um, Want to make a big shout out to the guys in green. Those are my uh, channel members. I uh, appreciate everybody who has joined the channel at some point or are still a club member today. So uh, those things help me to do things like Fox Days of Christmas. Well, speaking of which, you guys know what Fox Days of Christmas is on our channel here. Every year we do a lot of, uh, we, we give away a lot of stuff. Um, we gave away about 20 items, 16 items last year. Very good items. So that's coming up soon. We've got a whole list of stuff here. So big shout to my uh, my channel members for help supporting that cause. So today's topic is pretty much, you guys see the thumbnails? Um, I literally were, was just sitting there thinking about Fox Body stuff. And, and one of the things that I'm dealing with now, I like to try to, to relate the experience with some of the stuff that I'm going through, like with my white car and the weight reduction and my black car. Um, one of the issues that we all have is, is back orders. And on top of back orders, I don't know if you guys seen the cam prices, but them cam prices is expensive right now. Um, and you know, it's pretty much has to do with stock on the, the, the materials. Uh, you know, the company's having a hard time getting all the materials from what I understand. But in the midst of back orders and, and waiting on money, in time for that matter, because time is the most valuable asset, right? Um, there's mods that you can do to your Fox body. And we've talked about the stuff in the channel many times. I, I just feel like, you know, if I continue to, you know, continue to, to reiterate some of that stuff, maybe the guys that are just coming into the genre or gals or anybody who's coming into the Fox body genre can maybe, you know, catch wind of a couple of these uh, these mods that you can do. Uh, I do have a whiteboard in case we get a little bit crazy and start doing top 10 stuff. But, um, you know, there's a lot of mods that you can do to your car pertaining to junkyard. You guys see that stuff in the background of my thumbnail. So we're going to talk about that here in a minute. And uh, I'm going to give a little uh, give a little shout out to some of the guys in my chat. Some of the what's up, staying domination, Paul King, Fox boosted body. What's up, pimp? What's up, cousin Paul? My man, cousin Paul, in the house. Give me something I bought plenty of. My... <laughs> Give me something I've bought plenty of off eBay from you. <laughs> What's up, Chris? I appreciate that. Mike Cheryl, Broken Tool, Mike Straminski, and Handle Motorsports. Big shout out to Handle Motorsports. They're our uh, number one sponsor of the channel. Um, also, want to give a big shout out to Trick Flow, um, you know, Mosier, uh, Math Racing, uh, just to name a few on the channel here. So. Anyways, uh, let's talk about mods. So as pertaining to, this is a situational thing, but you know, if you're out there, you know, trying to get your Fox body done and you're having a hard time with camshafts, you're having a hard time getting cylinder heads, you're having a hard time getting an intake. The number one mod that usually people do 
on a Fox body for the most part is like an exhaust and a gear thing. Um, kind of to give you guys a little bit of a heads up. If you're running a stock exhaust and you're, you know, your Cadillac converters are, you know, you got to look into your, your, your county and make sure that, you know, you, you can put an off-road H pipe on or, or whatever, but um, you know, off-road H pipes are probably one of the number one mods that you can do. And you can do it pretty cheap. If you, if you, you, you can get them on like marketplace and such. Um, but gears, when we start talking about like gears, cause I think the seat of the pants feel of, you know, you know, your acceleration of your Fox body, I think that's probably going to be my number one of the cheapest mods. And we're going to go into a little bit of detail cause that's where I'm going to start. So yeah, let me get in here to the, uh, the chat, um, close to four Benjamins on a good cam. That is correct. So Folks, if you got camshafts, uh, you know, I highly suggest if you get an opportunity, you know, we live in an era that just, you know, new is better and, and, and consuming, you know, new parts and I want to buy this part for that part or whatever. Guys, consider secondhand parts if they're in pretty good condition. You know, I, 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 I mean, even junk our stuff. The Fox body camshaft will get you. You can make 550 wheel on a Fox body camshaft. I, I mean, I did it with some rockers. I mean, it had a little bit of help from Cobra rockers, but the point of the matter is, is, you know, you know, buying and, and, and bigger isn't always better when it comes to, you know, cylinder heads and, 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 and gears and, and, and trans the whole list put it that way. So what's up Floyd? Um, I mean, more expensive isn't better. I mean, I say that as I'm staring at RC comps, right. But there was, that was a purposeful buy. So wasn't the strange breaks that I, that I purchased. So we'll get into that a little bit later on some other, you know, some other video or whatever. So, um, but the number one thing I'm going to probably have to say, Oh, got the gear mods. And just so you guys know, before I get into the whiteboard, y'all see this, uh, you want to take, we'll take, you know what? We'll take a peek at the 387 a little bit later, but that's what this is sitting right here. This is my 387. Actually, I'm going to mark that on there <laughs> just for the live stream. Yes, if you guys will go through some of the stuff that I had just picked up from the diamond shop, aka the machine shop, as the mad scientist and I, we shot a little bit of a video. What's up, Floyd Mark? Was it Marcy? Country, I have an F30317s I bought. Yeah, dude, that's a great... That's a good start. <laughs> of course, I'm going to end up grinding all this off anyways. 387. <laughs> so there it is. Anyway, uh, how's it going? What's up, Brady? Um, anyway, so moving on. One of the, We're going to start. In you, some of you guys that's followed the channel, I haven't done a junkyard live stream in a long time, and I need to get back into it. There's a couple more to kind of revisit top 10, top 20. I used to have like a big long list. And I don't know if you're familiar with corral.net. That is a, just a, 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 a just decades of knowledge. Uh, SBFtech.com. Big shout to Joel 5.0. Big shout to uh, TMOS. All the guys that's been in the, you know, in the genre for a long time. Those are the, the you know, those folks have, 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 have like, you know, set the, you know, set the path for Fox body, you know, uh, information and it's out there on the net guys i mean you guys watch the live streams you watch the videos that us content creators put out but i mean it, it, consider you know checking out some of these websites i mean they just they, every every possible connect you know you know any issue that a fox body could have it's pretty much there in the writing whether it's koeo or koer or whatever you want to call it so feel free if you uh have a question tech wise obviously fox body related to uh, ask in the chat if you need some help with something, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about mods, bro. Before I erase this, if anybody's curious about how much weight Strange Breaks saved me. If you didn't watch the video, I'm giving you kind of a cheat sheet here. Um, SN95 and Cobra rotor hub caliper brake pads, caliper bracket, miscellaneous hardware weighed just about 68 pounds, and all my Strange stuff that replaced it weighed just at 35. So I saved. 33 pounds total and that might not seem like a lot to you guys but rolling weight unsprung weight that's a lot so 
Uh, De Carr definitely responded well to it. Sad part is it's the end of the year and it's time for some maintenance. So the biggest issue in the night, what Floyd, Floyd say? The biggest issue in the 90s is of people, 90% of the people I know are into hot rods racing or Chevy guys. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with Chevy. What's up, Colin Watson? Uh, KP, reading that you make gains on porting and polishing junkyard E7s. Now, here's the thing, and I'm going to talk about that real quick. KP, what KP, KP said. Now, and I'm sure that some other engine builders would also agree. We back, back, good. Okay, so uh, going back to the question, reading that make gain. So uh, as far as porting is concerned, guys, um, you know, consider the fact that, you know, there's a lot of time involved when when you're trying, and, and the time versus the gains. Now, I'm not saying E7 heads can't make power, guys. You see what I've done with uh, Project Hot Wheels. Um, you know, you see what I've done with, you know, with the GT40 stuff. I mean, consider the fact that in order to get E7s to flow even half decent versus doing like a, uh, you know, a GT40 head swap, um, it's just a lot of time. So I guess that would be a pain in the ass for the most part. Travis, finally a guy who does some real builds that are logically and very informative. Man, I appreciate that, Travis. I'm just trying to catch up, guys. So I apologize if I missed your comment. Real quick on those brakes. Love the video. You think you can run those on the street? Uh, no. <laughs> um, it will take some good porting to match GT40 P heads. That's, that's basically what I just said. So, yes. So, anyways, moving on. We got some top mods. So, are we good here as far as uh yeah Tustin does really well with, with the stuff that he has going on with his cars. Um I think if I see if I if I seen his his blog, well, I think the YouTube has the blog. If I seen it right, it looks like he's about to start messing with a coupe. So I'm sure there's gonna be a video on it. I really enjoy watching uh you know watching Rod's stuff. You know, if you guys don't know who Rod is, that's that's Tustin 5 0. Um you know, I enjoy, I've, I've watched Tussin for years. I've been subscribed to his channel for years. So definitely dig what he does. Sorry if I asked already, uh, just joined chat. Any active LMR codes? They do not like, they do not have codes. Uh, if they do a code, it'll be like a Thanksgiving thing. Maybe. I don't know. I'm, LMR is not, um, you know, they don't give me codes or anything like that. So I'm sorry if that doesn't help you. Um, Carber injected for drag racing. They both have, let me tell you what, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say either or because, you know, if you, those car, there's, there's a lot of carb, even carb turbo cars out there. That'll just, that'll skin your ass on, 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 on a drag race for sure. I mean, we just, we just went to our last no prep. Was it two weeks ago? Week, week and a half ago. And I'm pretty sure, um, my buddy's car, who we raced in the finals, his car was a 347 the carbureted car. Car went A to B, bro. You can't hate on that. Not one bit. So. Jacob, the Roller 5.0 inherited the 351 firing order. Um, that's correct. So the 351 firing order, what is it? Oh. <laughs> One, what is it? One, I don't even know what after one eight four six five seven two something like that. 
one three seven two six five four eight. I'm trying to think of the old firing order. One eight. What is it? Anyway, one three seven two six five four eight. So three fifty one Windsor also uh, had that firing order. So Michael came across nineteen seventies Boss three hundred two block with four bolt mains. It's board thirty over. I plan on stroking it to a three forty seven and turboing it. What's your thoughts on these blocks? Send it. If you can get a hold of a three hundred two Boss block. I would consider probably selling it more than anything. I mean, it's probably got more of a, you know, it's probably got more of a value to the Ford community, you know, being being put back into another boss car. You know what I mean? Somewhere a boss car is missing its engine. You probably get some good money for it enough to probably, or at least offset some of the costs for an aftermarket block. You know what I mean? I say run what you what you're comfortable with. That's correct, Slow Fox. So. First thing we're going to talk about, like I said, first mod we talked about was was uh, was gears. Now, I'm just going to put this. I'm not going to get fancy on this board. Now, you know, we I wasn't going to do the board today, but I figured, you know, screw it. So gears and diff, cheap mods. Now, this is going to require you to go to the junkyard. Now, the reason why it's a cheap mod is because it's out of junkyard. So consider the fact, um, and I helped this with a with a subscriber on the channel, uh, Dominic. You know, he ended up buying a cheap set of thirty one spline axles that a buddy of mine, Joe, was selling, like hundred bucks. And you know, they're not uncommon to find thirty one spline because you can't find you can't use a thirty one spline axle out of any of the vehicles or trucks or explorers to fit in the Fox body or even an SN95 axle. So when you're talking junkyard stuff, um, the Explorer has two things right there in their axle that will modify your Fox body from bone stock. It has its, the, the differential in the Explorer is already set up with 31 spline spider gears. We've talked about that in the past. So for like 75 bucks on Amazon, you can buy some carbon fiber packs watch you know my channel's way i stacked the i did a differential video and i'm pretty sure uh brutal did the same thing so 75 bucks you could get a 31 spline differential and you know maybe keep your eye out for a set of 31 spline axles box length up on you know facebook marketplace or something and legitimately in the same exact axle you pulled the pull the differential out of is a set of gears so they're either 410s, uh, 355s, I've seen 327s. All the good gear sets are in, in an Explorer, but usually they're 373, which is really good if you're just out there wanting to put something together. And they're Ford gears. So, you know, I still run Ford gears in my white car. You know, I should have polished gears, but we'll get into that later on. So, But gears and diff, guys, I think that's one of the cheapest mods. I mean, you're looking at 75 bucks for a carbon pack. You know, for the differential, uh, you probably get the gears and the diff if you pull them for like, you know, 50 bucks at the junkyard. It's kind of a pain in the ass to pull them, but you're saving money. Make sure you take the flange with you too from the Explorer, the big, I think it's four inch flange. Because if you ever do a 1350 joint, yeah, 1350 joint, then, then you're going to need a bigger flange. So, I mean, probably one of the better, cheapest mods to do. Because, you know, one of the first mods that I always talk about doing is the gears, uh, whether it's automatic or stick. So, you know, you could run 373s or 410 and either one of them, and it makes a difference. You know, you'll have, you know, that seat of the pants, you know, fox body feel. You know what I mean? Just, just you know, that, that quickness, that acceleration or whatever. So, and upgrading your 31 spline axles from 28 is always a good thing. It's always a good first move. And you can do it cheap. So if you're waiting on money and you're waiting on back orders on cylinder heads or even exhaust, turbo kits, intake, cam, whatever, and you haven't done that mod yet, it's cheap and it's ready to do. And then you can get it at the junkyard. So, all right. Um, I'm doing battery. Re I'm, I'm going to catch up. I'm doing a battery relocation in my Fox to my hatch. Where's the best spot for the ground cable? as close as possible. I actually put my ground cable through uh, one of the uh, 
one of the holes in the in the floor pan in the back, back in the yeah, spare area. Um, there's a factory hole that usually has a little plug in it. And I went into the frame, like right there next to the frame. So it's you know, it's got a good a good ground that's part of the body. You see what I mean? So personally, I'd run fuel injected. Uh are the factory headers restrictive? Uh kind of. They're like inch and a half. What's up, Colin? What's up, 650 Motors? If you guys are out there on the West Coast, that's your guy right there. Fox body and tunes well. So, yeah. So, if you're at the junkyard and you wanted to get like a drive shaft, um, just like 650 said, an Aero, Aerostar? What was the Chevy? Isn't the Chevy the Aerostar? Or I think it's Ford. I think Ford was the Aerostar. What was the Chevy version of that? That I keep getting messed up with. <laughs> Um, how, how do you feel about PBR brakes? Five lug, five lug axles off a of 98 Explorer. So 98 Explorer axles will not fit in a Fox body. They're, they, uh, they're too big. The, the carrier, the gears, like I just been talking about, that's what we just said. Number one, probably if you're waiting for money and time, probably your best mod. One of the best mods. Cheap, easy, junkyard. We'll get into some of the other ones, which are pretty obvious, but I'm going to talk about some of the ones that we don't normally talk about. Uh, you guys all know what I'm talking about, cylinder heads and, and intake. We'll get there. We'll talk a little bit of shit this, today about, uh, you know, saving some money in the midst of crazy inflation, inflation back orders stuff. I don't know. Can I run a Cobra Master Booster with uh, drum brakes? Yes. What year Explorers? 96 to 01. Gears, subframes, always a first mod. So he's correct. Uh, if you can do a cheap mod um, that'll actually make a considerable, everything makes a difference with a Fox body. So if you're starting from nothing, you know, e even the cheap subframes will, will, will work and help. Um, some of us that, you know, some of you that want to go faster, obviously you're going to, you probably want to start looking at maybe going through the floor with your subframes. I think Team Z makes a really nice kit there's a couple a uh, couple of them out there maximum motorsports i think they make subframes that actually come through like the floor pan which is really nice because it's 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 a lot it stiffens up the chassis quite a bit and if you're trying to race or make your car road raceable or drag raceable or no prep or just simply want a car that handles well you know consider doing some good subframes on it so uh ats brakes that's something we're doing on the black car so let's go ahead and block that person astro van is the chevy version that's correct um i have two ford explorer upper and lower intakes those are actually a, a good explorer so we'll just talk about the obvious just to get them out of the way cheap mods cheap We'll go, we'll go with the, uh, the Explorer first. Now we talk about the Explorer GT40 intake often. I actually run that on now this thing right here. Uh, I'm going to put a price tag. So gears and diff without doing any work, you're probably looking at about like 50 bucks at a boneyard. So I got 50 in there. Okay. Explorer GT40 intake, same thing, 50 bucks. That's usually the going rate at a at a junkyard. Now, this sort of thing is a pretty much a direct bolt-on minus the EGR spacer that has the coolant that goes through it. You have to tap the, I think it's the rear port to meet up with your, your heater tube if that's what you want to do. Nice, cheap, budget-minded, you know what I mean? GT40 intake. Um, they have different versions. They have the Cobra GT40 intake. They have the, you know, the, the tubular GT40 intake, what have you. So anyways, um, the GT40 intake, if you get it 96 and 97 off an Explorer or Mountaineer, they have a throttle body that's moddable. And what I mean by that, I did a short on it. Uh, if you want to know what I'm talking about, you can modify a Explorer 96 to 01, excuse me, 96, 97 only because it's got the return tube. You turn the return tube around, you modify the fly blade and or the uh, accelerator 
piece and you're good to go. You know, it's a 65 millimeter, you, you know, you can knock, you know, actually three mods out with one intake, depending on what you, you get. So in the midst of having to pay $800 for a, you know, Holly system X or trick flow, not that they're bad intakes. They're just, things are getting expensive. So, you know, getting out there and trying to save a little bit of money here and there is basically what I'm doing right here, right now on this live stream. You know, there's so many that I could talk about, but I would rather go into a little bit of detail on a couple of them versus just kind of, you know, blanket covering all of them. So um, I'm going to add to the Explore GT40 intake the, you know, usually you get it for 50 bucks, right? You probably can get A and B at the same time for the same price. So we're going to say injectors. Now, this is basically for the guys who want to run naturally aspirated, uh, maybe maybe an entry level like supercharger, a trim or something small. You know what I mean? And throttle body. 96, 97. So here you go. So you're looking at if you get this intake and them injectors are yellow, you know, 19 pound injectors. Those are a better injector than you have in your Fox body. The, 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 the fatty style ones, the EV1 old schools. The, the the injectors, the Explorer injectors are EV6s, but they still got an EV1 plug in them. So they'll plug right in and they got a better spray pattern than the old school uh, injectors do. So they have a, a, a little bit of a less chance to get clogged, I guess you want to call it. If you get it off of 96, early 97, and get the throttle body, you get like three mods for like 50 bucks. You see what I mean? I mean, granted, that's what you, even if you get it, on marketplace and the guys got the original injectors and throttle body not the white ones we're talking about the yellow ones so if they got the white injectors on them and later models actually had it i think there are 17 pound injectors those don't work right because those have the ev i think those have the ev6 plug in them or whatever they call them so that's a really good mod if you're trying to save some money or you can go carbureted so carbureted also saves you a little bit of money but obviously you want to put a little bit of money into the carburetor that you know that that's a good name brand quality or whatever so correct that is how much i paid for so tommy davis my bbk long tubes still fit with gt40 p heads yes and no basically guys if you're going to run long tubes with any sort of gt40 product um consider running 50 degree or 90 degree boots, you know, just your spark plug wires will probably have to be changed. Um, is it worth it? Well, hell yeah, it is. So, I mean, the performance over time, I mean, GT 40 P heads are like tier one, tier three performance, um, for, you know, over stock, you know, it's, they're, they're worth 25 horsepower to the wheels, just bolting them on, which is a really good thing. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Richard Holner Dino tested three different GT 40 intake. Yes, I know. We are going no difference in power between the combos. Actually, um, we're going to do the same thing with a turbo. So we're going to do a little bit different. Uh, McBride Racing. What's up, Steve-O? Yeah, I've been look, looking for a 351 EFI intake to do my turbo setup. 1200 for a Holly High Ram hurts a little bit. That's correct. So, you know, this is a lot of this, you know, saving money, cheap mods that I'm trying to do. You know, you could make good power. I ran into the low tens with this stuff. You know, it's 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 doable. It's moddable. Uh, it's been around for a long time. We talk about that stuff all the time. There's other channels that talk about it quite a bit. It's just it's it's good stuff to have. Even if you see it out there and it's cheap, pick it up. Don't let it get junked. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? What's up, Fat Boy Fox? Yeah, so you definitely want the yellow injectors are actually an upgrade. They're the same pound, but I can tell you, Explorer 19 pound injectors tap out at exactly 350 wheel. So unless you put them on a stroker motor, bro, I mean they'll be. You could stick with your factory 19 pound mass air meter and these Explorer intake. Explorer injectors, even on a lightly, I mean, even on a 331 stroker, is it the be best answer? No, but consider the fact that we're in a, you know, we're, we're in a time frame right now where a lot of back orders and inflated prices are happening. You know, I mean, these things are getting really expensive. You know, I looked up the other day, I'm not even gonna lie to you, 
I looked up AFR 72 CC chamber heads just for shits and giggles because I was thinking about putting them on the 387, right? The things were like three grand, bro. I last time I looked up AFRs because I own I own three pairs of them, so I don't ever look the price up because I wasn't gonna buy a new one anyways. I think the last set I bought were like twenty one hundred. I could not believe it. Could not believe they were three thousand. And I'm not complaining. You got to do what you got to do. I'm not mad at AFR or whatever. It's just the the way it is right now. We got to get more thrifty with our fox bodies. <laughs> yes, love fox thrifty. Floyd, were you at the, okay. What's up, Braille for Rods? It's good to see you, buddy. Nathan Tuck in the house. What's going on? One of my oldest and uh, longest subscribers at the highest tier. I appreciate you, Nathan, for what you do for the channel, my man. Thank you so much. Uh, what would be a good cam... What would be a good Cam Springs rockers to run with a stock 302 with GT40 heads? Your stock cam is 44, 444 lift. It's got a decent duration on it. Put 172 rockers. Now, if you can find them, you could probably get them on Marketplace. I don't even think Crane owns them anymore or not owns them, but I don't think they sell them anymore. But I got away with these for years on the black car. It basically manipulates the cam lift cam lope but you know this this is what i'm talking about these are actually factory cobra crane cam cobras i'm gonna show y'all see it crane cam it's got an f3 number on it Whoop. i'm trying not to get it so it doesn't fall on my laptop <sighs> won't zoom in it's got an f3 number on it these 172 rockers are really good to run with the stock cam. Uh, stock bottom end 302, just fine. If you can get your hands on them or even get your hands on the replicas, that's what you want to run with Tommy Davis. Any tips? Uh, what was that? Any tips on talking the wife to what? It's your... <laughs> um, I really couldn't help you there. <laughs> Waiting on money and time? Always, always. Speaking of stock cams, can you regrind the stockers? Like the ones that exist or get another one? What's up, Frank Freestangs? Eric C., I don't know if it's just luck, but every time I put 172 rockers, 172s on a Fox, sounds like a sewing machine. You, okay, so... I got a lot of experience with 172s. Uh, you probably either need, you probably need longer push rods. So I'm not going to lie to you. We got six, six, four, uh, we got GT40 P heads on dad's block, right? The one that I built over here that you guys see on the channel with the little turbo. We actually had to uh, run a 630 can, a 630 push rod length. Six, 6.25 inch is the factory stock length push rod. We had to run 6.30 length because it sounded like a sewing machine. So that tells you right there that you don't have enough push rod language tapping. So as soon as we changed it, it that, that all went away. Don't start your project until you have all parts money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wicked said, ask for forgiveness. Uh, sewing machine is a good thing. Uh, regrind existing cams. I don't think so. So continuing on. Explore intake. So obviously we've talked about rockers. Those rockers are from a factory Cobra. If you got, if you get an, uh, an uh, if you get an opportunity to get a set of Cobra Crane Cam 172 rockers, um, there's a couple issues you that, that, that arise with them as far as like uh, the pedestals. Make sure they're not broken. Uh, make sure you check out the the wearable, you know, the wearable parts of the uh, the rocker or whatever. But they're an amazing uh, a lifter for a GT40 or even an E7 head. We had those on Project Stock, or excuse me, Project Hot Wheels, and we made really good power. So we're going to go right to the heads because, I mean, we're already talking about GT40 stuff. And to be honest with you guys, you know, you're looking at uh, about a hundred and a quarter. Usually you have to pull them. So cheap mod, if you don't have the money for aluminum heads or can't get any, K-1 
can't find any or trust any that are on the internet uh, as far as like, uh, you know, like marketplace or whatever. GT40 heads are, 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 they're a great cylinder head to have, even if you have to rebuild them. Now, usually you have to put some money in the machine work. So, you know, you're looking at spring kit, you know, 100, 175, you know, machine work, probably hundred buck. But you're still you're still doing well price wise with with the with the cylinder heads. You know, you have full hundred in them, and you know, they would 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 be like one of the best mods that you can do. Now, GT43 bars are worth now as far as like worth is concerned, three bars are a direct bolt-on. Okay. Now, four bars, you're going to need to pay attention to spark plug. I'll go into a little bit of detail with that as to why people steer away from them. But the four bars are GT40P. They're my favorite head because I think they flow really well. And you guys are going to see what I'm talking about. Fox Boosted Body, man. I appreciate the $69.99 super chat, man. Super awesome of you, man. I appreciate that, man. Supporting the channel. Thank you. That's uh, does, does CA mean that you're from uh, you're up north in Canada? Um, <laughs> what did Mustang guy say? I'm late, I'm already years into <laughs> you got to get that thing off the stands, brother. So, our explorer cylinder heads, uh, okay, so. The GT40 head, and this is why I'm going through some of these mods. We're going to talk about other ones too. They have nothing to do with the engine. But the GT40 head is probably one of, if not your best bang for buck in the junkyard. Now, you probably say to yourself, well, where the hell do they come from? So, 96 to 01, Ford Explorers either came in a 4.0 or a 5.0. And usually they had a V8 on the fender. Easy to tell. Hell, most of these pull-aparts and pick-a-pulls, whatever, already have that inventory anyways. So you'd know if you're coming to look at an engine. Matter of fact, if you can get to a boneyard who actually still does work for the customer, like pulling engines, just buy the whole damn engine. It's not, it's it's worth its weight in gold as far as even if you paid four to five hundred dollars, like most normal GT40 motors go for, pay it, buy it, forget about it. Even if you don't use it, it's the same thing I say about the 351 Windsor 94 to 98. If you can find one of those and you can get it for under 500 bucks, get it, put it in the corner. At least you have. But anyways, GT40 P head came in around 98, 99, 2000, 2001, had it a little bit of a different plug angle. I think it moved it like 20 degrees or something, which interrupted with a lot of our cylinder head, uh, you know, our headers. So you had a little bit of a spark plug issue. So. As far as bang for buck, everybody knows uh, the cheapest mod bang for buck undoubtedly is a GT40 cylinder head. The nice thing about it is, is when you find the GT40 cylinder head, you also probably found the intake too that we were just talking about. So for like 500 bucks, hell, not even that. Probably looking at five or 600 bucks, you could probably add anywhere between 30 and 40 wheel power, you know, 265, 270 is about the normal area that a stock bottom end gt40 headed with intake and mods like i'm just talking about it's best bank for buck period <laughs> i am not afraid of, yeah for sure joe do not be afraid of those four bars <clears throat> dude i appreciate that jeffrey black car looking sick appreciate that we just uh we drove that thing all today um it's kind of funny you come up to a red light and like everybody's a race car driver when you're driving around in the fox body just trying to, I, I was, I had a whole trunk load of groceries. <laughs> yes, I do. I appreciate that Fox boosted. That was a, that was a great uh, super chat, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, What do you say? It's on ponies and centers, better, uh, better tires. Okay. I'd love to see how uh, a good how-to video on how to properly rebuild iron heads. They're definitely not easy. What mass mass air meter came with it? 
Um, it's a slot meter, if I'm not mistaken. It's not something that you're going to want. Um, you can take the Fox Body 19 pound injectors, uh, excuse me, the Explorer 19 pound injectors, Mountaineer 19 pound injectors, and they they work just fine with the uh, the, the the factory mass air meter. Now there are some budget mods out there. There are some junkyard, um, you know, mass air meters that you can get that'll work. But then you have to start. Then you're talking about possibly rewiring, you know, your 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 plug because the old Fox body plug was the four pin, and you start getting up past I think 96, and they start bringing the IAT and the ACT. I forget the two. I think it's the intake air temp and the, they, they move two sensors. So it becomes a six wire. Or so, um, neighbor has a mint Eddie Bauer five V eight nineties teal green. Goodness. Nice. Uh, any idea on what combustion combustion chamber it is three. Okay. So the, the GT 40 P heads came usually between, uh, 57 and 61 ish. Um, more in the 50s than anything. So just, I always considered it 58 cc's. Uh, the three bar heads, which is the, the the other iron head, which came in 96, in early 97 Mountaineers. And then of course they came in the Lightnings and the Cobras, 93, 94, 95. Those are like a 63, 64 chamber head. So that's, that's, uh, that's where we're at with the combustion chambers. Now, the if I remember correctly, the old school, even the new school 351, 94 to 98, like the D-O-O, he, D-O-O, D-O-0-E, was it D-0-O-E, that's it. Um, I think those had a big chamber. I think they were like a 69 or 70. Um, they're like the old school GT40 heads. The old 351 heads used to be like the old schools. That's pretty nice. <coughs> Someone either wants to race me or wants to buy my SV. <laughs> That's right. Uh, bar heads were about fit. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Neo, digging into a problem with my setup. Turbo stock bottom end. When I come back from a good run, the engine gets and get the engine hot. She won't start back up after shutting her off. She turns over like she's hydrolocked. Um, actually my buddy, Randy Davis is just going through this. So what we decided to do with my buddy, Randy's car, uh, you guys see him on the, on the channel is he hit me up today and I gave him a distributor to use on his car because I think what's happening is, is, is that PIP is starting to go. I think what, when he, when these, when these ignition pieces start to go, they start acting funny under heat. Um, like the PIP that's pretty, pretty common. If it's breaking up, that could be an issue. Um, I don't know if it's breaking up on a pass, but I'm not going to lie to you. I have a similar issue with my white car. Uh, sometimes uh, I come back from a run and it just doesn't want to start. Uh, I just let it sit. It doesn't really bother me all that much, but uh, might have something to do with your distributor. So uh, what does it mean? Three bar, four bar, new question. So KP, um, cylinder heads. I do not have any GT40 heads here right now, do I? At the end of the cylinder head, KP, at the end of the cylinder head, uh, there's markings. I don't know if you've been if you've been around engines a long time, but uh, the double hump heads for the the, the the Chevy head, if you guys remember that, they had markings. The, the, there's identifying markings on cylinder heads that you can see, you know, three bar, four bar. So you know what? I do have one. I'll grab a cylinder head and I'll show you exa guys exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. And then we'll continue talking about So I do have a I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I do have a core head. Uh, the other cylinder head, its mate was destroyed. So, KP, this is what I'm talking about. For you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, Explorer heads, see the bars right at the, right at the end? You have me mark them for you. I mean, you can't miss it. 
So when you go to the junkyard and see an Explorer, it's a V8. See the four bars? They're like casted into the cylinder head. Uh, three bars, like I said, were more of a direct bolt-on for a Fox body. Whereas the GT40P one, like that one there, uh, had a little bit of a different spark plug angle. I actually like the P heads. I made more power with them. <laughs> ah, all right. I got one that almost dies when the hood is closed. Nothing touching the hood. Hmm. What did Q? What did Q Force ask? Good. All right, here we go. So moving on, uh, I want to talk something a little bit different. So <laughs> I did want to talk about the camshafts too, real quick. Now the. Uh, Fox cam is still a good cam with the rockers, you know. So Fox cam is a 440 lift. And the Explorer cam is 422-448. Now these two camshafts are actually pretty good if you don't have one uh, to use with the 172 rockers. With the 172 rockers, I'll hit like it's a B cam. You know what I'm saying? So the next mod we're going to talk about, still junkyard stuff, uh, pretty easy. Um, if you guys are doing, I want to I I talk about the brakes, but let's just talk about one of the more popular mods to do. And we'll talk about that price too. Um, and I've, I've used this stuff. I've referenced this stuff before on, on my other live streams. But we're going to go ahead and do it again. As you guys already know, my black car, we're running around on Fox brakes, which isn't the right answer. So we have a factory master cylinder, factory brake booster. We got a really good set of Drill slotted rotors. My calipers are probably, uh, you know, ready to go out, but they are what they are. But um, one of the biggest mods that we're going to do the, to, to this car, we're going to leave it rear drum for the most part. So we're going to do a brake upgrade. So what, what does that all entail? So this is a big one I want to talk about real quick because there's a number of things involved in this cheap mod for your Fox body. And there's different angles of the reason why you should do it. Let me show you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Give me an uno momento, please. Probably one of the best mods to do on your car. I haven't done it yet on my black car here. I understand. I understand. But it is going to happen. And I've used the, I've actually brought these out before with the channel. So we'll talk about this right now. <laughs> um, Taurus rear brakes is what I'm running. Nice. Okay, so for you guys that are haven't you know like are new to the channel that haven't been around the channel very long, we did a video about one of the best break upgrades. So one of the biggest, probably one of the best mods you can do on a Fox Body Mustang is converting it to five lug. Now, do you need it? No, 
But what's the first thing you need to do to convert it? You need spindles. Well, you can still cheat and put the rotor on. There's nothing wrong with that. I put three inch studs in my rotor and it allowed me to run a spacer. These are actually wheels from an, uh, if you see the, the deep dish back here, these are actually wheels from a, a 94 to 04, you know, style car that I put on a Fox body. So the spindle that I'm talking about, which is probably one of the easier ones to do, is the F6, F7, S, S90, or excuse me, SN95 spindle. Now, you probably would want to run, there's a couple of things you're going to want to buy in tandem here, but the spindle itself, to start, you know, and I probably, unless 90, 94, 95 had, had the spindle to where it had the, like the notch in it. You see what I'm talking about? Like this is an F5. It's right here, this notch. Whereas 96 to 04, this was straight here. This bump steer, this where the, you know, where the, um, the tie rod end comes in. So this is probably, this is a really good piece to have. Hard to find, comes on V6 and V8, so it doesn't matter what the hell it is. You know what I mean? So probably one of the better, you know, items to get for your Fox body. But there's a couple of things that you should buy with it. You don't need to buy the stuff I'm about to show you because most likely if you got that spindle from one of your, uh, from an SN95, then most likely you probably could get the caliper bracket, the caliper, the rotor, all of it, hub bearing and all, for probably, say, around 50, 75 bucks uh, at a junkyard. And again, it doesn't matter if it's a V6 or a V8. You know, if you see a Mustang out there, hell, even if you don't need them, 94, 95, pick them spindles off, no matter what condition they are, because you can buy a, a, a new hub bearing for it. You can't get the spindle. You know what I mean? So. SN95 spindles, you know, with, you know, you know, with OE stuff, probably looking at uh, about 75 bucks, probably one of the best that you can get. Now I was five lug on my black car for years. Um, but what does switching the five lug do for you? It opens up options for braking. It opens up options for other wheels because, you know, the one thing I couldn't stand about being a four lug is being limited on what wheel I could buy and use. You know what I mean? Especially with drag wheels. I wanted to run 10 inch rear wheels with like a, a six and a quarter or six and a half back spacing, but weld hadn't made those in years. And center line was like an eight and a half. And it just, I just wasn't having it. I was just like, you know what? I converted my rear axles to Fox length five lug ran the Ranger rotor. I don't even remember what they are, um, but you can get, you know, you can get, it's kind of crazy. I have all these parts in my hand. You can get like five lug drums. You know what I mean? Fox link, 31 spawn, axles. You guys see me? Okay. Chat's not working. Hmm. So S, S95, uh, SN95 spindles with the OE stuff, probably get it for like 75 bucks. Uh, if you're going to get that spindle, go ahead and move up to the master cylinder and grab this. This is actually on my white car, by the way, with strange brakes. Is it the right answer? No, I should be manual, right? But I just replaced this in one of my videos. This isn't the one from my car, but get this. This will help you. I mean, you can get it. For, uh, you can actually get this on Amazon for like 60 bucks. So if you don't want it, don't get it. You can buy this new, whatever. Can't get the spindles, but you can get this. Also, if you're, if you're getting ready to do the, the spindle five lug swap, do yourself a favor and get an adjustable proportioning valve. Again, these are like 75 bucks-ish, and they make different versions. This is the Willwood one that I used on my, on my white car. I really like this one. Um, they have different brands that are, they even have some cheaper ones like Summit Racing ones, so. It'll, it'll change your brake bias. So let me go through some of these chat guys and we'll continue talking. Uh, 94, 95 spindles are selling for 450 on eBay. Yeah. So I, I know what you're talking about. 
So this is the hardest part. This is probably one of the best junkyard mods that you can get outside of GT40 stuff because again, it changes your, you know, your brake options and your wheel options. Let me show you one of the aftermarket. Well, it's not even aftermarket. It's actually considered a junkyard part, but you can actually buy this part still new. So let's say you got the spindles. You found a set of 9495 spindles. You put all the OE shit on there if you need it, or you want to go ahead and spend a little bit more money, okay? We're, we're, we're still waiting on cylinder heads and camshafts and, and time and money in, in, a, in a market that's backward versus actually having a junkyard that has the availability of these spindles. Say you pick them up for 75 bucks and you got a little more money in your pocket. You want to make them better. Instead of running the, the factory OE uh, Cobra, or uh, not Cobra, but their factory OE brakes and caliper that you have on it, what you could do is for like a buck, a buck 25, I think the driver side's 150, the passenger side's 125. You can just go ahead and buy yourself a Cadillac brake. Now you probably say to yourself, and if you're new to the channel, you don't know what I'm talking about. Yes, four piston Cadillac brake caliper. This will fit on your SN95 spindle. Uh, there's a little bit of modifications need to be done, but you know, matched with, you're looking, like I said, you can still get these new. 125 bucks for passenger side, cheap. Dude, it's made by Brembo. It's probably one of the, this is a well-known mod that even to date surprised me when I when I found out that they, they still had it. You know, that, that we were, you know, it's got two bleeders, one for each side for each piston. Um, you know, matched with, you know, I, I bought a, a Callahan, is that right? Callahan invented, invented, Drove slider rotor. I think this is a 13 inch. So this is like the Cobra one. You know, the, with, with the Brembo, the car will stop on a dime. So you do you need those with the SN95 spindles? No. That's why I said 75 bucks at a junkyard. Probably be able to just do OE stuff and get away with it. It's fine. But you know, you, you're looking at you spend an extra. I think those, I think those rotors were like a buck fifty. So they weren't cheap. Um, so you're looking at 150 there, and you're looking about another 275. So you're looking at about another 400 bucks for the rotors and two brand new calipers. That you see what I mean? So we're we're st we're still talking some budget minded, you know, upgrade stuff. So when you do have the time or the money to get that turbo kit, at least your brakes are done. We talked about gear ratios, the cheap and the, you know, we're talking about GT40 stuff. You see what I mean? Trying to save y'all some money here. <laughs> um, let me walk back up here. Yo, Dan, a cow hood from Marketplace for 200. Nice. You should get it. If you need it. Fox Body Addiction, what's going on? Uh, I got spindles in a rear end off of the same car at the Boneyard. So speaking of which, if you're at the boneyard and the, you know, it doesn't, I don't even think it matter. I think the eight eights were in the V sixes as well. 94 to 95, you could run a rear disc, but here's the thing. We've been running on limited time with Fox body brakes in our black car for years. Is it the right answer? No. Is it safe? No, but a Brembo four, four piston caliper in the front as an upgrade don't need rears. I mean, you can run the rear disc. You probably should run the rear disc, but to be honest with you, you'll have 75 to 80% of your braking power usually, usually comes from the front anyways. So, you know, it probably be every bit of the brake you need to go every bit as fast as you need to go. You see what I mean? So, um, 9495 spindles also retain the Fox body tread width. That's correct. Uh, there's actually a company out there. Um, I asked, uh, I asked them to, I'm going to buy the kit, but, uh, I asked them to, uh, we were going to, we were going to put it on the channel and there's actually a kit out there that a company makes it's S and S or S and K. I don't remember their names that make the Brembo install super easy, no drilling required. So well, that will be there. There's a couple, there's a couple winter videos that I was supposed to do last winter that we're actually going to do on the black car this year. So this is the next upgrade that the black car is going to get 
is the brakes, at least for the front. I'm not worried about the rears, like I told you guys, but we're going to do this because that's needs to be done. Moving on. Um, I appreciate you, Floyd, for stopping in. Good brake setup, Neil. Thanks, Tim. Uh, 88 Turbo Thunderbird four-wheel disc swap. Possible for, yes. So um, if you wanted to do a rear disc and you wanted to stay four lug, you'd have to find an 8788 Turbo Coupe. The nice thing about the 8788 Turbo Coupe rear axle is it already had gears. So if you were looking to skip the explore gear ratio stuff and you wanted to do, do rear disc and you didn't want to change axles or anything just yet, uh, nine, the 8788 uh, Turbo Coupe rear axle only, 8788, not 86. Um, I'm pretty sure they share the same axle as the 93 Cobras did. So if I remember correctly, all the the rear the, the rear rotors and the calipers were the same part number as far as re uh, you know <clears throat> re you know remanufactured or whatever. Staying domination when you when we uh, did it, it made a mod a bit, and not they have the kits to make them it makes it easy. That's correct. So the SNS SNK kit that he's that's probably what I was talking about. So. If I remember correctly, Stang Domination, actually, are, aren't you the YouTube channel that did a really good video about this? Because I, I remember seeing a couple of videos. I mean, this is a mod that's been done well before me, guys. So there is content out there if you want to check out what we're doing here where you can get a really good idea. And I think actually they did it the the other, I think they did it the the, the, the cheaper way by doing the, the, the that drilling them out and stuff like that. So I will shout that out for sure. <clears throat> What's up, Don B? Is that Donnie B? I remember uh, I remember you were the on three plug. I'm not sure what that means. And a Fox broken tool. Uh, will they fit 17-inch Cobra wheels? Yes. I don't think you can go any lower. Um, if I remember correctly, once you put the... And somebody can chime in here in the comments or in the chat. I think once you go Cadillac Brembo, I think you you can't go any – I don't think you can go 16-inch wheel. I think the caliper doesn't clear anymore, the barrel of the wheel. Because um, I'm pretty sure that the Brembo Cadillac brake actually requires the 13-inch rotor that I just showed you. Uh, Sean Russell, Rock Auto Sales, all brake stuff for Turbo Thunderbird, cheap way to go four lug. You need brackets, LMR, hold. Okay. Um, Neil Mustangs, big ups, bro. Got to go. No problem, KP. <clears throat> so that's where we're at right now with the spindles. Uh, it, it leads yourself into, um, you know, better wheel selection. It also uh, better brake selection, um, braking, brake power, and selection. Because there's also, like I said, if you guys follow the channel, you could also put the PBR Cobra brakes on, uh, which I ran for years and stopped at 155 with no issues. Not that that's the right answer, but I never really had a brake issue with my, with my car with the Cobra brakes. But they were heavy. They were about almost 40 pounds more. So, you know, better wheel selection. I'm just going to put that right on the 387 right there. You all see that? Probably not, huh? They're too bright. Better wheel selection, better power braking, etc. cetera. So um, at the same time, you can also upgrade the hubs at the same time. Uh, you know, this is this is just extra money. But definitely worth it. I mean, when you, when you got the SN95 spindle, be a good time to get a get a new bearing. I think these are only 100 bucks. Definitely worth it. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, we posted it on the Fox. Yep, before they had any kit to fit the Fox. Let me, let me go ahead and post this here. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, if you guys want to check out, Stang Domination did a... Um, how I actually learned about the Brembo brakes was a couple years ago. Um, I seen a video. My buddy Jim at Fox Chamber did did it on his his white GT. So 
thought it was really cool. And I said to myself, well, I'm going to definitely bring that to the channel. So I appreciate what you do over there, man. They made the kit and it seems 100, 10, 100 times easier. Yeah, there, there was some drilling involved there, if I remember correctly. Uh, Neo, can you run a 325 crank with a stock bore? I don't know. In a 302. I'm trying to think what that would be. Is that a 331, 347? 347 is a three, isn't that a three, four stroke? So 331 stock bore. Yeah, wouldn't it be a 327? Because isn't 331 30 over? Am I right? <clears throat> cool. I'm going to look more into it. Yeah, so definitely a, a definitely a decent, a decent mod to do. Yeah, that's that's what I thought, TV. 17 inch minimum. Yeah, so it's, they make plenty of. You don't have to you don't have to bore your block over to go uh, to do a stroker. Just run a just get a stock bore piston. You know, all three. Listen, all three thirty one, three forty seven, um, three eighty seven, three ninety three block. You know, all those kits usually give you an option. Say, hey, well, you know, is your bore stock or is it thirty over? You see what I mean? And do yourself a favor, if you do decide to do a kit of whatever block, make sure you got the pistons available for your machinist, because usually they machine the block to the piston, you know, depending on, you know, not every piston is created equal. So some pistons require more, you know, more, you know, wall clearance. Like some may require four to five thousands clearance because because the piston grows so much. And some of them may only require two and a half. So I think hyper eutectic stuff is like that. Uh, with a strange brake upgrade, did you clear a 15 inch wheel? Um, yeah, strange brakes are small. So they should they don't have an issue uh, clearing anything for the most part. But one thing that did happen in the front, somebody had mentioned it in my comments. They 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 did it did bring the wheel out about a quarter of an inch. What size throttle body are you running on the black car? 80? I think the white car has 85 and the black car has 80. Or wait, it's vice versa. Black car has 85, the white car has 80. So those are some uh, cheap mods that you can do. I mean, we're about an hour and 10 minutes in. Um, there's so many mods that you can do right now uh, with, with limited budget that would just make leaps and bounds of your Fox body. I mean, being real with you, you know, subframes is probably one of the better ones. Gears, exhaust, obviously. Um, you know, if you got a stock Mustang, those are those mods are like probably one of the favorited mods. You know, you do the camshaft as well, but camshaft involves lifters, also involves springs on your cylinder heads. You start getting into a little bit of a rabbit hole there when you start trying to get your motor to sound a certain way. Uh, like I said, you can get you can do some one seven rockers. And, and, and make your camshaft kind of manipulate the sound a little bit on just a bone stock motor. Um, definitely a lot of things you can do at this, you know, in this day and age, we got so many things to pick from, but they're just, everything's just getting expensive and it's, it's, it's just the way it is now, I guess. So I ran across a crank and rod setup. Didn't have any, didn't have pistons. So I consider running. Yeah. Krusty is running 72 millimeter with a matched upper. Yep. So anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. We're going to talk about, you guys want to talk about the 387? I mean, we can continue talking about cheap mods if you want, but I really wanted to kind of revisit the, the fact that there's, there's back orders and there's some things are expensive you know, there's different ways you can spend money on your Fox body instead of having to, you know, just your car in general, you know, we, without, you know, we are just now kind of getting into that stuff and there's some really good mods, like, you know, you can make good power on GT40 shit, you know, gears and diff. I mean, come on, you're strengthening your axle and you know, you're getting an acceleration from it. So Fox cam, well, Fox cam in a budget explore cam if you had to, but you know, put one seven rockers on them if you can. So, uh, quarter, uh, quarter horse is a decent mod. Quarter horse is a tuning mod. 
if you can get somebody to tune it. Anyways, let's talk about the 387. I'm sure you guys probably have some questions. How much did you guys have to? That's the question of the day, isn't it? But considering the fact that you're watching my live stream, I will show you. Did you have to clearance the pistons on the 387? You guys want to see them? I'm about to start a K member and oil pan replacement journey. Another thing I do every winter is go over the whole car with a clay bar. That's smart. That is smart. Okay, I will show you the clearancing of my 302 pistons. Now, for you guys that are just joining the channel or are here in my live stream and don't know what the hell we're talking about, behind me, let me put some of this brake stuff away. I'm actually going to move this too. Behind me is a 387. It's not a scat crank. That's the wrong box. We used a, an Eagle crank. So Dave threw away the, the box and didn't answer. Shame on you. So. I'm going to put my brake stuff away and then we'll... Uh, Talk about the uh, 387. <clears throat> so if you guys have been following the channel, you guys know that we've purchased a, uh, a number of 387, or excuse me, 351 windows. Um, and all of them were 94 to 98, which makes them a roller. The nice thing about having a natural roller 351 is the fact that I could use camshafts that I already have on the shelf. And I could use just generic lifters and what have you. So it's kind of nice because one of the biggest budget cuts of that roller block is the fact that I don't have to run I don't have to run. Uh, I don't have to run link bar lifters to convert it to a roller cam because you're talking like 600 bucks there. So one of the biggest hurdles of putting a 351 roller camshaft in a 351 that's 93 and lower or early models. All right, yeah, early model. The fact is you can't put roller lifters in it without you know, having to run like a link bar or whatever. You see what I mean? Because you got to have a, a retainer of some sort to keep the lifter from moving all over the place. So here is, if you're, if you're just now joining the channel, this is our 351. Now, this was at the machine shop. We just brought it back. We're going to have a video on it this week. We're going to talk about some things in that video you guys need to hear. That's about it. So, you know, we didn't do anything fancy with the with the rod bearings. Just a cheap set of standard size rod bearings. Some piston rings. Now, I'm going to leave this one, the main bearings, to the video. So, you're going to have to watch that. Um, there's, a, there's something to be said about the main bearings and what we're doing here. But... You know, there's not much, you know, look how thick these 351 mains are. They're huge. You wonder why they hold power. They're like twice the size 302 pistons or, or main caps are. Anyways, for you joining the channel, we got head studs. And we're going to run Kometic gaskets because we're going to actually put a turbo on it. So we're not playing any games with this block. We're gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna go right to power level. So one of the issues we had with the block, this is the uh, 385 crankshaft, brand new. This thing was like 300 bucks. Yeah, I'm not gonna pull it out of its box. One of the issues that we had with the 387, if you've been watching the channel, is the clearancing of the skirt. 
We started mocking the 387 up because this is an actual Fox body piston on a 351 Windsor rod. This is a, yep, 351 Windsor rod. So what we had to do, we had to pull the, the pin off of the factory 302 rod. We had to put, what ended up happening with this piston is it ended up distorting when we pulled this pin out. And it was kind of a pain in the ass because we actually had to hone this original factory TRW piston. This is a forged piston, by the way, in your Fox body. You know, usually they have part numbers in the, either on the top or they say TRW in the skirt here somewhere. This is the E7ZE number, and there's usually TRW on the other side. These are all been hot tanks, so. But the point of the matter is, is we had a pain, it was a pain in the ass because we had to re we had to reset this pin in this hole. So and we're putting together shit that's not supposed to be together. So we just figured, you know what? No big deal. But when we put these in the hole here, you know, in, in the in the 387, when we had the crank and we were spinning it around, we ended up hitting the skirts of the 302 pistons. So depending on what side this is, it's hitting the counterbalance. <clears throat> a 40 buck kit, uh, bolts, spacers. Yeah, I know you can do that. You can, you can drill and tap, but here's the thing with drilling and tapping is it still requires machine work. Um, you, you should be very careful doing that because there's a cam bearing there. And if you don't have the proper hardware, you could pinch the bearing which could end up wiping out the, uh, the camshaft. Um, I've seen that happen a number of times. Sure, you can drill it and make rollers, but what a lot of people, you know, for the amount of money they would have in machine work is about half the money. I don't know. I just, I went with, um, like, my white car motor is not a roller motor. It's a 93 block. So it was like the last year of it. I just went with Ling bars uh, instead of drilling the, the, the block. My machinist there didn't want to drill the block, but. Anyways, number five, you guys can see that's what that's all that's all the clearancing we had to do. Is it zooming? You see it? It's funny how people in the comments on some of my videos and my shorts with this were like, oh, you're gonna need to rebalance the whole block. Man, we didn't take we barely took a gram out of that. But we had to do it on both skirts. See it? Just enough to clear the counterbalance. Camshaft was fine. We didn't have an issue with camshaft. But uh, this is number one piston. Well, he had it wrong. Got to pay attention to this. But um, that's subject to hearsay. But yeah, they're pretty strong. Yes and yes. What heads and camera are you going to run with those pistons? Camshaft, we just have a B31 sitting on the shelf. We're just going to use what we have. Listen, this 387 isn't going to be the best build that we can build. It's not going to have the best heads. It's not going to have this big monster camshaft. It's not going to have any of that. Um, we're kind of limited to what cylinder heads we're going to run unless we want to fly cut the pistons, which Dave did not want to fly cut the pistons. We figured if we were going to go that far with it, we would just get a set of cheap or use one of the sets of 302 piston sets that I have here and just build a 393. But then you're looking at another $300 to board the block. You see what I mean? So you start talking about money and making money sense. This is th this mod here for this engine. It's probably one of the cheapest ones that you could possibly do if you had a stock bore. But there's a pain in the ass involved with it is you got to actually put the rod on the piston. You got the clearance a little bit. There's some things that need to be done, like fly cutting the pistons. Uh, you need to make sure what camshaft you run. You got to check to make sure you're going to clear the, the, the camshaft because the skirts on the, you know, the Fox body piston was a little bit longer than our normal stroker piston is, is, is short, you know, to, to, to clearance most of the, the travel or whatever. But <clears throat> yeah, the Morel link bar lifters are what I used in my white car. The black car has got the trick flow uh, link bars. Or, yeah. So, yeah, that wasn't a whole lot of clearancing. You guys you guys can see it. 
I mean, literally, it's like nicking it. It's all it needed. So, as far as the 387 is concerned, we boarded our, or we honed it ourselves, a little dingleberry hone, whatever. Uh, like a two, what was that, a 280 grit or something? I think it was a 280 grit. We bought a $300 crankshaft. It's the 385, uh, the 385 stroke. Um, the Windsor rods, the bore was good with the block. The Windsor rods were good. And we just took a set of factory Fox body pistons and put them on the rods. So we don't have a whole lot of money at all in this. Uh, we did balance. The, the, uh, the, the crankshaft came out real well right there where the, uh, <clears throat> where the natural hole is for the, the, the counterbalance in the rear. We just drilled more um, mallory, or not mallory, but we drilled more, you know, metal out of it. And then on the front, and you know, there was no counterbalance to drill out of, so we just took it out of the. Um, you can see we took it out of the the balancer. So this is pretty much going to be on this block. Uh, this is just something I had in the shelf. It was 28 ounce. It was perfect. Uh, the crankshaft was 28 ounce, and you know, these are parts that we just had laying around. The B31 camshaft. Just parts we have laying around. Uh, this is going to be outside of the camshaft itself in the spring upgrade on the on the cylinder heads. This is going to be a pretty much a Ford production block. Well, crankshaft too. <laughs> anyway, you look at it, it's going to be pretty awesome for being cheap. Did you grind on the block? Yes. So we had to take just a little bit out of, um, like I said, it's going to be in my video, just a little bit out of the area where the oil pump is. Why is there four valve reliefs when Mustang only had two valves? I'm not sure. That's exactly why I flip pistons. You don't want one side of the piston to weigh more than the other. That's correct. Anyway, that's so that's the update on the 387 as it sits right now. Um, we didn't take near as much metal as people th thought we were going to take out of the pistons. So as far as balancing is concerned, it's not even worth even mocking it back up to do it. Um, is it going to be, it's going to be just fine. You guys will see. I have a little faith in this build. It'll be all right, but we're doing it budget. We're doing it cheap and we probably will do it again in a different version. Um, <clears throat> I do have a set of 302 used forged pistons that I might use, might, might, might build a 393. Um, I do have the 351 specific forged pistons, so we'll probably build another 357. And you, as you guys know, we, we we bought three or four roller blocks, so um, I got some 351 stuff that I want to build just to have, um, and maybe give one away, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe sell one. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do with some of the other ones. I agree with that, Mustang guy. Always a good lot, man. I appreciate you coming in here, Landon. Because they were used in Chevy engines also. <laughs> so, yeah. So, what are we going to be doing now? Um, got about another five minutes left, guys. I encourage, you know, I appreciate everybody that's in green in the chat for uh, sticking around in the live stream. You guys are always welcome, channel members. Um, what do we got coming up this week? Well, we have a video we have a we have a no prep video if you guys are interested in any of that um, we have the video where we brought this home and we're going to talk about some of the stuff in the video that you didn't see with this build um we're trying to set up for the gt40 intake comparison video but it's kind of hard timing that up a little bit with with the uh with the dyno shop but probably going to be shooting the film on putting this together as if you guys remember the 302 we put together. So probably going to be the cheapest Ford Stroker build ever. I don't know. So I got about, we only had to buy uh, the crankshaft, but consider when you watch the video, you're going to understand what, what I mean. There's a lot of time consuming things that would actually cost you money at a machine, at a machine shop that you could probably do yourself, but some things that, I wanted to go step by step with the 387 build just because people know what they're up against if they do the same build. 
and I want to be as detailed. I don't want to leave out any information with that block because if this shit runs right, it's definitely an option, a cheap budget option to do if you're tired of your 8-2 deck 302 and you want to step into a 9-4 or 9-5 deck 351 base motor, but you don't want to go out there and buy all these other extra parts, well, here's what you should start looking for. You see what I mean? And we're going to build, we're going to make a video about that very specific thing. You know, if you find this, this is the options you have. This door opens, that door closes. See what I mean? So. I do appreciate the 397. Um, this might be something I can afford in the future. That's correct. So this is exactly why this motor's here. I've always wanted to build the 387. I've always been a big fan of the factory forged piston. I've never melted one. I've never actually broken one. I'm knock on wood or whatever, but you know, I'm building this motor. I'm not getting, I'm not overthinking it. I'm not rabbit holing it. Uh, matter of fact, you guys are going to be a little surprised on what we're actually putting it on, put, putting on there cylinder head wise. Probably already figured it out. But, you know, they people say, why? Well, I say, why not? I'm trying to do something that you can do budget minded for the channel. So I actually got a nickname for this motor already. Uh, when we do start to build it, I think you guys will appreciate it. So <clears throat> can't wait to see the e ETs on the 387. I appreciate that. So, anyways, that was a that was a it's a pretty good live stream. Um, do appreciate everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I didn't see any uh, any information on the web about three eighty sevens. Um, naturally, you could do a three ninety three, but here's the thing: uh, you do a three three ninety three, and you don't have, you know, pistons. You're, you're looking at five hundred. You know, you, you, then you're looking at another 300 to get it bored, right? Right? So that's 800 right there. Um, whereas using the factory forged pistons, you have to clearance a little bit. I've already kind of set the, set the stage for that, right? This is where you're going to need to nip them at. Nip them on all four corners. Because that needs to be, you know, this all that needs to be balanced anyways, right? So if you did it beforehand, you wouldn't have to worry about it when the machinist or whoever decided he was going to, you know, balance it anyways. So, you know, you can, you can actually clearance all four sides of the skirt. So wherever, which way it goes on, doesn't really matter. Right. So, and then you can actually clearance and Dremel your own area that I'm going to show in the video. So that way, when you hand it to them, you can say, Hey, these areas were already clearanced. I'm going to run this style camshaft. I need this rotating assembly balanced. And he might look at you a little weird say, Hey, I don't know what you're doing here. And you might suggest you go somewhere else or do something else with it. But that's what we're doing here in the channels to try to do something different. Uh, try to do something that's, that's out of the ordinary and budget. Cause that's normally, it's normally not even in the same sentence. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> love your show, Neo. Keep us motivated, man. I appreciate you, Eric. Appreciate you. What's up, Dave? So anyways, that's what we got going on this week. Uh, I encourage you guys, if you uh, haven't already checked out the join button below, be channel member. Um, all that stuff goes towards the channel. And we got a big Fox Days of Christmas coming up. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about and you're new to the channel, stick around. I'm going to be giving away about 20 gifts in for Christmas to the Fox Body community. So everybody will have equal amount chance to you win some cool stuff. And I got some sponsors on board for it. Big shout out to Handle Motorsports. Um, they're going to be giving away some stuff with me. Uh, the Ram, probably do a Ram clutch. Uh, probably do uh, Anderson Ford Motorsports. Probably do a couple things from them. Um, they're just great. You know, Anderson Ford Motorsports, Donnie B. Just, just great influencers here on, you know, in the Fox Body community. So, anyway. Give it a couple more minutes and we will be out. I appreciate that 650. You guys get a chance. Uh, like I said, Edgar is at 650 Motors. He's on Instagram. Um, I don't know if he's on Facebook, but uh, Instagram's probably the easiest way. If you're, if you're out there in the West Coast, need some Fox Body modifications, work done, tuning, that's your man right there. Uh, San Francisco Bay. So 
<clears throat> Fox Boosted Body. Support the channel, gents. Lots of work. I appreciate that, Fox Boosted. I want to give a big shout out to Fox Boosted for the $69.99 Super Chat today in our live. So I do appreciate you, my man. Thank you so much. Later, peeps. See you, Jimmer. Um, yeah, I appreciate that, Mark. So anyways, without further ado, um, let me just get real with you guys. We live in a day and age right now where, you know, money, money might be a little tight. You know, things are getting more expensive. Um, you know, time, family, you know, Fox bodies always get pushed to the side for the most part. Projects don't happen. Projects are forgotten. But consider one thing. If your car is sitting on stands, sitting on a jack stands, or sitting on the corner, it's got a cover over it, you know, consider getting it off the jack stands. Consider getting finishing your projects. When you there, there's just a lot of fun to be had in your Fox body and enjoying it. It's like, it's like a it's like having, you know, it's it's just better to just finish your project than to watch it just sit there and rot. You know what I mean? So if you have the ability to work on it a little bit at a time and finish your project, you, you just got to find the time to do it. And, you know, I hope you do. Here on the channel, we try to you know, give you budget-minded ideas, um, even if it's not the best option. So I really hope uh, I helped everybody here tonight. And I hope I hope help everybody, any somebody in the future with their Fox body build. But outside of that, guys, I just appreciate you watching me on the channel tonight. And I appreciate everybody. What did I say? <laughs> so anyways, all right, guys, we're going to go ahead and head out. Um, stick around for that 387. Get those projects done. Get them damn Fox bodies off the stands. You guys know who you are. Anyways, I appreciate everybody. <laughs> and I will see you guys this week in the videos. Have a good evening.